you notice when you're, if you're a therapist working with clients, very often as they're healing, they have, there's like they're emanating more and more light through the process. So I combining a lot of different things that I'm synthesizing mostly, and there's some other things I synthesize, but just wanted to give you this little snapshot. Certainly, I focus a lot on attachment, recognizing the categories, applying appropriate um, corrective experiences, helping people heal from their attachment injury um, so that they heal a broken connection. One of the short definitions of trauma is broken connection. So we want to see how we can help bring that back together. It can be broken connection to ourselves between me and me. It can be between me and another person like me and Janina or me and my partner or me and my friends. It can be a broken connection between the ground or our sense of source or our sense of spirituality. We just lose contact with a lot of the essential parts of our humanness. And as we heal that, they start to come back. And that's why I think combining attachment work with trauma work is really helpful. Uh, the trauma work I tend to use mo pr most predominantly is Peter Levine's somatic experiencing. As Janina said, I've taught for him for 25 years. We still produce courses together. Um, it's very body-centered. It under a deep understanding of nervous system regulation, uh, resourcing, completion of defensive impulses, and really a, a, a strong orientation on how to resolve trauma, which many of you I'm sure are familiar with. And there's other models out there that do a similar integration of somatic and um, nervous system work, understanding neuroscience and the brain, all of this we want to bring together. Um, and then Stephen Porges has been a big influence in his research with the polyvagal system. Uh, theory, theory and really helping us understand what happens physiologically when we feel safe and we have access to our medial prefrontal cortex and a sense of social engagement. We regain our capacity to connect to self and others. And also what happens in threat where we mobilize to meet the danger and then with life threat how we might do what he calls a dorsal dive and disconnect uh, or deeply dissociate or have digestive problems or feel immobilized or the freeze response might make us feel cold, all these different physiological shifts that can happen uh, depending on the degree of trauma and how to climb back out of a dorsal response or a, a stuck sympathetic defensive fight or flight response back into our capacity for social engagement, trust, connection, vitality, all these wonderful uh, markers for resiliency and post-traumatic vitality and growth. And then I've also been studying the diamond approach, my particular version of the spiritual journey, which combines psychology and spiritual inquiry. I've been doing that since the late 70s, so I'm a really a dinosaur in that work. I've been study teaching with Peter since, oh my gosh, 1995, and I started studying with him in 1989. So again, a bit of a dinosaur there. So uh, these are just some of the things that we pull together in helping people do this really challenging, but a very universal human journey of integrating trauma and healing attachment wounds and moving more towards our true nature, our being, our essential self. When trauma strikes, just there's like lightning that hits. Uh, it, it can disrupt our organization of ideas and organization of our ego structure in quite a dramatic way.